As we all know, it is now time for back to school. And today we're gonna talk all about dress code when it comes to schools. I have Dr. Anthony Mays here. You're with the Harris County Department of Education and you are the school's director. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you wanna tell the people a little bit about yourself? Uh, so I'm Anthony Mays again, Dr. Anthony Mays, Senior Director of Schools with the Harris County Department of Education. Why are there school dress codes and what benefits do they give parents, teachers, students? Some of the biggest things that you deal with with those dress codes is that it eliminates a huge distraction in the classroom. Uh, and so students aren't, you know, looking at who has on what anymore. Uh, and we can really focus on the business of schools. And so it eliminates that challenge uh, for students. And so uh, whether we're looking at bullying or, or conversations that, again, drive us away from instruction uh, or what we're there for, uh, you don't have that anymore. And for parents, you know, you get the opportunity of uh, the affordability of dress code. And so you don't have to go out and look for what's trendy, you know, I don't have to go out and spend, you know, huge amounts of money on dress code attire because it's simple. It's like I go in, I'm picking this shirt or I'm picking these pants. Uh, and so it makes it more, you know, it makes it easier for the parent uh, and it makes it uh, easier and better for that student once they get into that classroom. What do parents need to know? I know most parents have done most of their back to school shopping already, but what do they need to know before sending their kid into school for those first days? Know that again, it's a, it's a process. You got to calibrate. And so, you know, as you're transitioning back to school, sometimes there's uh, challenges with trying to figure out exactly what's appropriate and what's not. Uh, and so, uh, you know, parents get to go through this adjustment phase as well as students. And so uh, what I would say for parents is to bear with the district and the student or the school officials as they work to kind of, you know, determine what's right and what's wrong. When it comes to dress code, there's not really a one size fits all when it comes to the different districts and the, even the different schools within a district here in Houston. Why is that? Why are there different dress codes for different areas? The dress code is usually driven by um, local conversations and so local conversations and local challenges. So, you know, the community, um, you know, given by in, they get the chance to try to determine what's the most uh, appropriate uh, attire for our schools. And so that's not something that, you know, we get to decide for a district that we don't reside in. So uh, that's usually what drives what students will wear uh, within that respective district. Dress code has kind of evolved over the years. I know when I was in high school, uh, a lot of things that we weren't allowed to wear, students are now allowed to wear and right. vice versa. Right. Right. So um, can we talk about the evolution of dress code? You've watched the evolution of dress code to accommodate uh, various, you know, uh, diversity and culture within schools. You've also seen uh, the evolution of dress code just due to student safety concerns. And so you used to have certain colors where people would stay away from, but now uh, versus only having a couple colors that you can wear, now they're saying, hey, wear a knit polo. And so it doesn't matter what color it is, but wear a knit polo. So again, it's an ongoing conversation between uh, the community, uh, the parents and the school board staff or the school staff uh, to determine, again, what works for that, that community. And so those conversations, you know, whether it's you or me, uh, will continue to take place.